Okay guys, uh, this is Dan Sullivan, and this is card number three. Line numbers 300 to 310, measuring resistance in parallel. Uh, first thing I'm going to point out here, I'll take a couple of pictures and uh, give you a zoom in here. But somebody emailed me and uh, showed me this, and uh, all this is is a piece of wire, this solid wire. Uh, I'm using the 22 gauge and it's a piece of solid wire that's about an inch and a half or more long and it's bent at the middle and then soldered to the copper strip and then it makes uh, a very tight little slingshot sort of a slot here and you can see it uh, right there and what that allows you to do is it allows you to stick these resistors or these components down in and you can kind of squeeze the wire a little bit and uh, you can hold it in there but then if you want to you can pull it out really easily and then you can slide it back in and and it'll you know hold its position and that would be a very simple way for you guys to uh, uh, make changes to the boards without having to you know burn your fingers and solder and everything I want you to learn how to solder but at some point you're gonna get good at it and uh, you might come up with another way of doing things that's just as good. Uh, quick note, every one of you guys is my equal as far as I'm concerned. And I want you to understand that you have the right to get this stuff right. And you have the right to be good at it. And I want you to be good at it. So I don't want anybody to look at what I'm doing and think I'm special because I assure you I'm not. Um, and there are a lot of people on YouTube who are writing some pretty uh, insulting comments and you can certainly ask them and, and they'll tell you I'm sure uh, sticks and stones will break my bones but words will never hurt me um, the other thing is somebody emailed and said he's had a little trouble poking uh, the resistors in and I'm not I don't remember if I did this in the other video or not but just as a repeat if I didn't do it um, the resistors and the copper wire are easier to stick into the are easier to stick in here if you poke a hole with your knife blade first and then you may or may not need to put a little point on your resistor um, by, you know cutting just a tad off like that but when you do that that slides in really really easily goes in just like that and you can solder it very simply and then pulling the solder out is equally as simple and that's the whole solder right there. That was real time. And then if you want to pull it out, you can just solder it and then pull it out. And it automatically seals the hole and you're good to go. So um, two things people have sent me already on emails. Uh, emails they've sent me on how to do this better. And I thank them. Uh, so I'll try to use these ideas that you guys send me. And I'll be happy to... Um, um, uh, be happy to learn from you as quickly as you think you might be learning from me because smart teachers learn as fast or as well as they teach. So, okay, so what I've done, I've, I've already created the circuits here. At this point, you probably don't need me to build them for you. So I've got the, the, uh, the 100, the 330, the uh, 390, and the 470, which was... 500 but it's 470 so let me write that in um, this is not 500 so this is 470 and this is not 500 and this is 470 okay and um, you can do that make all the changes you want all right now that's also going to change our total resistance so here, here's what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to start out with the math and um, I have a little rig here that I built um, you can buy these banana clips at Radio Shack and all over the place or you can steal them from old meter leads or whatever I found that the thinner the wire the better because the thick wire tends to get in the way but um, what I've got here is a uh, basically a set of meter leads that you can solder in to the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder them in right here onto this parallel path. 
and I'm going to pull the resistors out and there we go uh, and I'm going to solder these in so let me go through the process here this is fairly typical um, I'll put a I'll put the calculator on it I just need something to hold them down take my solder and I'm going to tin the iron and then I will tin the wire and then when the wires tinned, I can put a little glob of solder here, a little glob of solder here, and then I can let me cut these. I don't want them to be too ragged. Oop, melting the calculator there. And then uh, soldering iron is a little tough to use sometimes. And I just stick it in there. Cools off a little bit. Stick it in here like this, and sure enough, we've got what is an effective a built-in voltmeter now. So I can take out my regular leads, and in an interesting kind of way, what I can do is now to read my resistance. Okay, to read my resistance, all I have to do is, is plug those resistors in. And that's what this fellow who emailed me said he was able to do, and he was able to play with a bunch of different resistors and practice the math and, and everything. And that's, that's what you need to do. You need to practice, practice the math and practice what you're doing. Um, so uh, that's going to be 97.3. This one is 313, so I guess I should be writing these down. So I've got 97.3 ohms, 319.9 ohms, 319.9 ohms. Take that out and put this one in. Get 0 0.381, which is 382 ohms, because that's 3 0.38 of a thousand. There's the K for a thousand. We pull this one out and put this one in, and that's 459 because it's 0.459K or 460. So it's supposed to be 470, but 460 is definitely within 5%. Okay, so let's do this um, step by step, and I'll show you the math, and uh, you can replay this video. If you're learning the parallel math, this is what you want to watch, okay? Um, so we're adding in this 1 over X button right here, all right? Um, it's the same formula as for series, where it's R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, but instead of just doing that, we're going to do R1 and then hit the 1 over X button and then add, and then the 330 R2 and the 1 over X and add, da, 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 1 over X, add, 1 over X, add, and then we do equal 1 over X, okay? And that will give us the answer we want. So. Um, we can do a couple of these real quick, and I can show you how they work. I can even show you with one resistor. So if I do 100 inverse equals inverse, I get 100. So if I put the 100 in and it's the only one, then that makes it... See, the tape does come off sometimes, so you've got to be kind of careful. Um, The 100 is 97.3, which is what we calculated. So, all right. Now, so let's use those exact numbers and let's see what we get. So let's do this. All right. So here are my actual numbers. So I'm going to put in 97.3 inverse plus 319 point nine inverse equals inverse and I get seventy four point six. So the number I'm looking for is seventy four point six. So I'm gonna put resistor one in parallel with resistor two. I get seventy four point six in the calculation 
and I get 74.7 on the meter. That's what these cards are for. You want to see this after you do this. All right. Now, here's the cool thing. I don't have to go back and start here. I can just take this number and add in the 382. So I can actually just invert that and pretend it's one resistor. So I can invert that, add to that 382 inverse equals inverse 62.4. I plug that one in and I get 62.4. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay. Um, I can then take this number and just invert it again and add in the 460. It equals an inverse, and I get 54.9. And if I turn this one on, I get 54.9. And it's actually 54.96, so this is bouncing back and forth between 54.9 and 55. All right. So um, if I wanted to do this with any of the other resistors out, I could start over again, and I strongly recommend you practice, 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 practice. So let's start with the, let's do only the three big ones. So let's do 319.9 inverse plus 382 inverse plus 460 inverse equals inverse 126.2 so that means if I take the 100 out I get pretty close to 126.2 and there's slop because things are changing okay so what I could do at this point is take out other resistors and do different math. Um, but I'm going to go through this one more time slowly because I want you to see what I'm doing. And I'll do it a little differently this time by starting over. You don't have to, but I want you to you know understand it. So let's start with the 97.3. 97.3 inverse plus 319.9 inverse equals inverse and we come up with 74.6 and we get 74.7 all right so oops so let's let's keep going but I'm going to start over and do this again so in this this we'll talk about here in just a second because I want you to see what's happening. Um, so we're going to do 97.3 inverse plus 319.9 inverse plus, and we'll add the third one in, 382 inverse equals inverse 62.4, and we get 62.5, yeah, 62.4, so it's bouncing back and forth. Again, I'll give you a tenth. That's easy. All right, so let's do it all again, just for practice. 97.3 inverse plus 319.9 inverse plus 382 inverse plus 460 inverse equals inverse 54.9. So that's the math for parallel circuits, plural, not circuit. This is not a parallel circuit. This is for parallel circuits. Okay, that's important. And people giving me a hard time about that because they're not understanding what I'm saying. You cannot have a parallel circuit because as soon as you add another path, it's now plural. It's circuits. Okay, so uh, that's a funny, funny thing. If you put all of those together, it becomes a series path with a parallel segment. So current would come in from one direction, split up and go through all of these, and then come out, joining up, come out the other end. Okay, 
So that's the that's the math. There's your one over X button. Make sure you use it so that the only thing you change from the previous lessons about series resistors is you do the series resistance equation, but now you add in the one over X button. Okay? All right, let's move on.